Well, hello everyone. Welcome to another session at the Future of Insurance Europe, where we will be discussing uh, innovation at a pace to kickstart travel recovery. Um, my name is Graham Dean. I'm head of insurance for Cover Genius, who is an insured tech. Um, and we enable large online businesses to sell insurance products to, to their global customers via a single API call. So I've, um, I'm glad to introduce you to two um, fellow guests today. Um, and I'm joined by Tiago Gondio, who is the commercial director um, of Skyscanner, and Peter Smith, who heads uh, Cover Genius Travel Partnership. Uh, we recently partnered with Skyscanner to launch a first of its kind COVID-19 bundle of travel insurance products. Uh, and we'll be addressing some of the challenges, um, goals and achievements that we've had so far in the journey uh, working together and, um, and, and, and then look to the future of, of travel and um, what, what we're expecting. So yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to the conversation and um, uh, yeah, welcome guys. Thanks for, thanks for taking the time. Pleasure to be here. Okay. Certainly is. Great. So I, I might kick off with a, a, a question, really, to 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 you, Tiago. Perhaps um, you know, but, you know, discuss briefly um, Skyscanner's journey into insurance, and you know, what was the catalyst for you actually to to uh, to to start sourcing uh, an insurance partnership, and and um, you know, wh where do you see some of the big needs or, or opportunities? Yeah, sure, Graham. Thanks, and and again, delighted to be here. Appreciate the invitation. Um, well, Pete, Pete will know, we started talking about partnering with, with Cover Genius actually just before um, COVID turned into a global pandemic, didn't we, Pete? And it wasn't too long before. It was maybe a few weeks before. We were meeting in London uh, with, with your CEO as well and with KE, our, our VP of sales. Um, and really, we already saw a need for Skyscanner to start uh, offering a, a, you know, a peace of mind products to our travelers, even as I say before COVID. So COVID just accelerated this need. And um, I guess for us, it's really important to partner with the right companies. So partners that have a sort of a similar, similar ethos or similar values to us, that's the most important thing, right? Traveler first is really important. Especially in insurance, you know that and you guys will know much better than, than I do that insurance doesn't have um, doesn't have that 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 sort of you know that great PR in general in terms of uh, particularly travel insurance. So how can we partner with a company like Cover Genius, who is actually uh, you know excelling in this area with great NPS scores and and all that um, to disrupt the industry? And, and something else was not, not just the values, but can we partner with someone that is at the same time that they are innovative, they have speed to market because it's great to innovate, but if you're not fast to react, especially when you're um, in the middle of, of, of a great uh, and of, of, a, of, a, of a global pandemic, which of course introduces uh, urgency, then of course that's, that's not, not good. And, and finally, I would, I would say um, we need someone who can scale globally because Skyscanner is a global company. Long are the days where we were just Europe, Europe focused. So we need someone who can not only think of UK, Europe, but also uh, Americas and, and APAC. Uh, just on the final point here, and, and um, I'll, I'll, we, can, we can move on. Um, one of the things that, that led us to accelerate this move to insurance was also some findings from a, a global pulse survey that we've we've run we have i'm looking at my notes because i don't know this uh, from by heart but 250,000 respondents in 19 countries um, and around 40 percent of of, uh, of of those people ranked travel insurance in the top three uh, factors that would give them uh, more peace of mind to start traveling again so definitely it's something that we feel plays a big role in, um, in, in introducing, um, I guess, confidence to travel again, alongside flexibility, alongside um, transparency and knowing where people can travel, when they can go, uh, is their money safe and, um, 
and all that. Yeah, I, I think I'd echo a lot of what you say there, uh, Tiago. You know, we were discussing travel insurance prior to the pandemic hitting. And I guess when the pandemic hit, um, the world changed that day. And we really had to consider how we were going to pivot to ensure that we were still addressing customers' needs. You know, and Skyscanner and Cover Genius are both very customer-centric businesses. And you and I very quickly got our heads together and our, our relevant teams to figure out, you know, what was going to encourage customers to travel again and to start booking travel whenever that might be. And back in February, March, I think we anticipated that might have been August when things would start mm -hmm. to return to normal. But who knew we'd still be in this position, you know, at this time of year. But, um, but what you say there around the sort of consumer sentiment surveys that you run globally, we saw very similar results. You know, Cover Genius already worked with a, a bunch of um big travel partners all around the world in, in several different countries. And what we saw almost consistently across those partners with the traffic volume that was still coming through is um, we had our bright, right sort of data analytics team go away and observe what was happening to things like uh, in attach rate of insurance. So how many customers were taking out insurance as part of their core travel or trip purchase. And interestingly, what we saw through those observations is that the attach rate of insurance increased by between four and 600% over the months as COVID unfolded versus the previous sort of peaks of a sort of December time. So I guess that demonstrated that there was, there was a real appetite from customers for hyper relevant products that meant that they felt protected and comfortable when they were booking their trip. So I think it was really interesting that the need and the desire to purchase insurance just ramped right up as the pandemic got worse and worse. Yeah, and, and Tiago, as a technology company, is, is there anything, um, you know, as a call out that, that you look to, um, uh, you know, when you partner with businesses, and it may not be just insurance businesses, is, is there anything that um, is, is a kind of main call out around the, the, that customer experience that, that both you and Pete sort of mentioned? Um, you know, what, what are some of those call outs around that's super important to a business like Skyscanner who are, who are really customer centric? Mm. Yeah, so, so it's, it's, um, it's pretty much what I was, what I was um, covering earlier. Uh, I think if if we focus on the on the values part, um, for us and if you look if you look around the travel industry, it's um, it, it, we we proud ourselves we pride ourselves in in you know we have award after award in terms of consumer trust and traveler trust. We always do what's right for travelers, even when we are. We are just in the middle, right? We, in, in many, many of our transactions aren't on site. Um, we are acting as, as a referral, uh, as a referrer to, to our partners. And we, we pride ourselves in having a world-class user satisfaction team that will, um, that will do everything they can to compensate travelers when something goes wrong, even, even if it's Skyscanner out of pocket sometimes. And I must say, we have excellent relationships with our partners as well uh, when it comes to that customer service level collaboration. So a, a typical business review with, between Skyscan and partners will not just be, let's look at the numbers and move on. There's always a very strong section on traveler sentiment, uh, post-booking metrics, and, and how, are, um, how are travelers being, being treated because it's very easy for things to go wrong in, in travel. And so, so that's normally what comes to mind as we start to plan new partnerships as well. It's, it's about um, partnering with, with, uh, with companies that can guarantee really strong, sustainable, traveler-first, um, I guess, traveler-first experiences for, for, um, for our consumers. And from the conversations I've had with, with Pete and the team uh, very early on, judging by, as I mentioned before, your NPS, uh, and, and judging by uh, simply uh, learning more about what, how, you, how you think about uh, the long term and how can you make, make 
insurance and 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 uh, how can you make an insurance uh, sort of sustainable and change a little bit the old mentality that um, you're not going to get what you're buying they will always pull the rug from underneath you and you guys are doing an excellent job so um, that's what led us to work with with cover genius yeah oh, so thank we you. landed that's, that's, on on, on building oh sorry pete so we land on getting the covid specific products didn't we from 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 the back of those those sort of servers and and, and understanding well to, to to build that confidence we needed to build products that are covering covid um and 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 the various perils whether it's a, a for health and and medical um related but also um you know i'm sure what a what a heap of people found is that you know a lot of trips and and, and events and things were being cancelled so we had to ensure that there was sustainable coverage to, to, to allow for those instances. But um, Pete, is there anything you found when looking at the product that you were working quite closely with, Tiago, that, um, that, kind of, that kind of gave you a bit of a steer in what we needed to do from that product point of view? Yeah, sure. I think we were led, um, we, we both with our relevant teams went away and did some exploratory work. And of course, we've been insurance for many, many years. And Tiago and the team have been in travel for many, many years. So we combined our strength and through consumer sentiment surveys, we really started to understand what would drive customers to feel more comfortable, give them, make them feel protected when they were booking. And it's all those things you just mentioned, Graham. So um, what we were able to do, I guess, as an insure tech, which I guess traditional insurers can really uh, struggle with, they have a challenge maybe around the tech or the way in which they work, their legacy systems and so on. We, we as an insure tech have the benefit of, of not being in that place. So we were able to move really quickly with our panel of underwriters and our tech to develop a suite of COVID specific products um, over the space of just a number of weeks, actually, based off the back of what we knew customers needed. Um, because I think one thing that this COVID pandemic has done is it's really shone a spotlight on insurance and um, uh, the press and PR and insurance companies and everything else has made it really clear to customers that perhaps what they purchased in the past isn't necessarily fit for purpose in the new world. Um, and, and I think one thing we've been able to do is look at that scenario and actually think about, okay, we want to make something that is relevant to customers in this new world um, and make sure they are protected, but they understand what they're purchasing. So we take it right back to brass tacks. You know, when a customer is looking to purchase their cover from the very beginning, we're really transparent in terms of what the customer is and isn't covered for, what they are and aren't paying for. I'm not forcing them to pay for um, a full comprehensive policy, for example, where they have to dig through the T's and C's to try to understand whether or not they're covered. With, with Skyscanner and the proposition we've launched, we make it super simple and super clear from the very beginning what a customer's purchasing. Um, so that when it comes to, uh, um, you know, the unfortunate situation, for example, where a customer has to make a claim, those claims, or the majority of which are then not denied because the customer didn't realize they weren't covered. So we do it in a way that it's really transparent. Customers know what they're buying. When it comes to having to make a claim, most of those claims are approved. And they're done so, you know, very, very quickly. And they're paid out very, very quickly. Because we know in doing that, we mirror the customer-centric approach that Skyscanner has as a whole. And that brings us back to that alignment piece Tiago talked about where we're two culturally similar businesses that can very quickly innovate and are backed by great tech. And that sort of agility means that we can move fast in scenarios like this. Yeah, awesome. And, and Tiago, where is Skyscanner sort of um, planning for, for the... For the I guess you know we've we've obviously had announcements that the um, the vaccine is, is is looking positive and likely will will sort of come into force in early New Year and and is that are you preparing for that to be a, a really big positive? Do you think it's going to be still a slow rollout over the next twelve months? And yeah, it'd be great to get your view on 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 the recovery side of things. Yeah, well, um, it's a bit of crystal ball at the moment. We're all trying to do the best we can in terms of, of, of predictions, uh, but we, we are positive. We are quite optimistic, of course, based, on, based off of the, the, the last couple of uh, vaccine news. 
we should be. Um, we're optimistic, but we are also, I guess, uh, cautious. Let's say cautiously optimistic then. As, as you will know, so many of the, um, of the analysis you know, by consulting companies and airlines and, and others have put, it, have put sort of 2024, 2025 as the year where travel will be back at 2019 levels. We are prepared, if that's the case, then uh, you know, we, uh, we know what we need to do. It's all about continuing the work that we're doing already, particularly around offering people transparency of information. So you come to you come to Skyscanner, you're not just coming to Skyscanner to buy a flight. You're coming to Skyscanner to know if you can go to a certain place, to know where you can go. Because one thing is for sure, there's probably too much information at the moment going on, right? So you 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 type on on Google. Um, COVID restrictions, and you find, depending on the country you're in, you find the official government guidelines, but then you find each news outlet will have their own page, and then it's all a little bit confusing. So Skyscanner is aggregating a bunch of this really uh, important data into one, one map that uh, people can subscribe to, and they get emails when something changes for countries they're interested. So there's that side of things. It's also around, um, People now, and the way we think about it is, people will now start to spend a little bit more time thinking about what can go wrong uh, when compared to uh, pre, pre-COVID. So um, what we need to do is we need to give them, again, crisp and clear and uh, accurate information. So you need to show you which tickets are flexible. We need to show you which airlines uh, have the most, uh, have the highest, uh, um, let's call it cleanliness or hygiene scores. We need to show you, um, you know, information. Uh, of course, we need to show you products that are relevant, such as COVID, uh, COVID protection products. And, um, you know, it's all around not only offering the, the, the best travel inventory, but offering you the, uh, the the peace of mind that you come to Skyscanner, you can you can um, have have access to all the information you need to confidently proceed with your with your um, with your travels. So going forward, uh, one of the things we've seen straight away was, uh, of course, everyone has seen a big shift to domestic. So how do we? Uh, and of course, we work very closely with you guys to make sure that we have a, a product from an insurance perspective that works for our domestic uh, travelers. Uh, we've seen a significant increase in one-way travel, um, the shorter booking windows. This was uh, really, really made very clear. And um, so, yes, um, I, think, I think to summarize, we are optimistic. We know what we need to, to, to work on. Uh, it's all around peace of mind and providing people with that um, that information they need to to make their decisions and support uh, if when things go wrong and um, making sure that we have the right partners to support us on the on this journey over the next few years. Mm. Well, it's fair to say I think we've probably got a bit more collaboration on developing new products for. For the the new normal after after we get back to to travelling, so I'm sure there's yeah, lots of more fun sessions to be done. So look, we're almost out of time, guys. But um, thank you very much for for joining me today. Um, it, it's been a good chat, and, and hopefully next time we can we can um, we can do it again and maybe go deeper. So yeah, thanks, thanks, guys. Thanks, thank everyone. you. It's been a pleasure. Cheers. Thank been you. A pleasure. Bye. Bye. Bye.